Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining. Well, in this video, we'll take a look at two specific linear fusion rifles and see if we could consider them part of the DPS meta since the damage buff. And we'll do that by comparing how they perform to some of the best single weapons tested last season. What this means is, thankfully, the on-screen damage numbers against Carl did not change at the start of Season of the Splicer. Unless, of course, a weapon or perk was buffed or nerfed. This also means all numbers you see this season can be directly compared to testing and results from last season. So the two weapons in question will be Sleeper Simulant with the Catalyst and Threaded Needle, one example with Rapid Hit and Frenzy, and one with Clown Cartridge and Vorpal Weapon. I'm only testing these as in the last video I made, they were the only weapons worth using for DPS, and I have no other well-rolled linear fusion rifles. The best performing Threaded Needle will then be paired with Wither Horde, both the legendaries have a major spec mod, while one loader mod was used and nothing to increase reserves. When testing the timings, as with the last linear fusion rifle video, the rapid hit example was carried out in a warlock's well with lunar faction boots, as that has the same reload time as a fully stacked rapid hit with frenzy and a loader mod. So first up, it's sleeper simulant. Now, Bungie said that from the start of Season 14 that increasing linear fusion rifle damage by 15%, and also increasing reserves slightly, but Unintentionally, Sleeper Simulant slipped through the quality control net and came out on the other side with just a 3.25% buff. The change in numbers can be seen on screen now, with Season 13 on the left and Season 14 on the right. Slightly disappointing, but I'm going to test it anyway. So as you just saw, damage per round is currently 63,586 and its reserves are now 13, which is up from 11. This makes total damage for all of those 826,618. But there's a catch. Because there is now an extra reload, but only one round in the final magazine, the average DPS number has actually dropped from last season, believe it or not. And it's because of the extra downtime from that final reload. So with that in mind, total time came in at 22.12 seconds, which makes DPS 37,370. Yet, despite the lower average DPS figure, this will be better than last season at any given point in time due to the very small damage increase. For anyone who's interested why DPS might be lower despite doing more damage, take a look at my DPS behind the numbers video where I do explain this kind of anomaly in a bit more detail. Now it's threaded needle, first with clown cartridge and vorpal weapon. It's worth noting at this point that for both examples of threaded needle, they have projection fuse in the second column, so nothing that affects charge time for example keeping things nice and consistent. So with the 15% buff and the 15% increase from Vorpal Weapon, this now does 53,457 damage per round. Full reserves are now 20, so total damage is 1,069,140. For timings, I tried this a few times until I got the best possible outcome from Clown Cartridge, that being where only two reloads are required to fire all 20 rounds. This came in the form of five rounds in the first magazine, then eight, and finally seven. Total time was 23.97 seconds, and therefore DPS, 44,603. Clown cartridge though, won't always be on your side. So you will have situations where it takes three reloads to fire 20, reducing that DPS figure. Remember, this is based off an opening magazine of five. If you've used the weapon already in an activity and reloaded, then picked up ammo to replenish reserves, it's more likely you'll only require two reloads, as you won't be starting with five in the opening mag. And now to take another look at this weapon with Rapid Hit and Frenzy. So, Frenzy was nerfed at the start of Season 14, and now only provides a 15% increase to damage, as opposed to 20% last season. This means damage per round is coming in at 53,457, the same as Vorpal. Total reserves are also identical at 20, and therefore total damages as well, so 1,069,140. But with a fully stacked Rapid Hit and Frenzy proc, reload time is the same as a Lunar Faction well, like on screen. So despite there being a third reload with this weapon, it actually fires those 20 rounds faster. I mean, look at that reload speed, it's absurdly fast. Time to fire all in reserves is 23.05 seconds, so just under a second faster, meaning DPS is 46,384. I think at this point now, with the right rolls, linear fusion rifles are certainly meta. If not, at a minimum, they're on the borderline. So, what if we take Threaded Needle with Rapid Hit and Frenzy and pair it with Wither Horde? I haven't taken a look at this weapon for a while now, so we'll have a quick recap. 
when you first fire this at a target, it has an initial impact value of 1063, and then ticks 17 times over approximately 10 seconds. Each tick does 5,439. This means for every round fired at a target, it will do 93,526 damage, but you can only have one direct hit inflicting that damage at any given moment. You can fire a second at the ground and increase that, but for this combination, I'm only going to be testing with a single round fired at the target. And that's because I genuinely don't expect two rounds to massively increase DPS due to the added downtime. Total damage will be significantly higher though, so there may be situations where it's more worth doing. So the method was to start with a round from Wither Horde, empty two magazines from Threaded Needle, back to Wither Horde for another round without reloading the fusion rifle, by the way you need the Wither Horde catalyst for this, and then switch back to Threaded Needle, reload and empty the last two magazines. This method means for the final round in the second mag, tick damage will have stopped, and for the final two rounds in the last mag, there'll be no tick damage there either. Total damage for this is 1,256,192. If you want to check that for yourself, take the damage per round of Wither Horde just discussed, double it, and add it to the total damage for Threaded Needle. Now, timings. On screen is the clip that I've used for this testing. The blights don't last as long when they're on the ground, so don't pay any attention to when they end, only when they're fired. Travel time for Wither Horde has been taken into consideration. I wasn't using any kind of sprint cancelling technique to switch between weapons, and there were no dexterity mods equipped. This is just bare bones weapon switching. Total time for this came in at 25.23 seconds, therefore with total damage at 1,256,192, DPS is 49,790, so nearly 3,500 higher than without Wither Horde. Sprint cancelling will help you improve that a little, and using two rounds from Wither Horde will help a little as well, but I don't expect it to be by much. Now in the interest of transparency, which is something I said I was going to focus on starting with Season 13. I'm going to bring on screen in a moment a blank graph. In the lower right hand corner will be the very clip you've just seen that was used for testing timings. As the clip plays, the line for threaded needle and wither horde will move along the graph in sync. This will not only demonstrate that what goes into the graphs does, in fact, with some accuracy, reflect what's in the testing clips, but it will give an insight into what exactly is happening at any given moment for this combination, as there are a few different climb rates for the line. I'll stop talking now, and I'll bring in the sound from the clip. So you can see at every point where the gradient of the line changes, what causes it, and I've slowed down this second run to help make it easier to follow. The exception is when Wither Horde tick damage ends, which as I've said, is because it doesn't last for as long on the ground, like in the clip, as it does when fired directly at the target, which is what the damage duration is based on. You can however see the line climb slowly when it's fired and during any reloads. So keeping this on screen, I'm now putting up both Threaded Needle variants on the roam. And let's address the elephant in the room. Threaded Needle and Wither Horde not being quite as good as you might expect. Well, firstly remember this is with one round from the grenade launcher, not two. Secondly, there is this delay at the start which opens up a gap that this combination can't recover from until 5 seconds, and even then, as it starts to make a meaningful difference, which is just after 10 seconds, you need to switch to Wither Horde again to fire your next round before switching back to Threaded Needle to reload. I mean, look at the amount of time that you're not doing as much damage for, and it's not until after 16 to 17 seconds that it recovers from that and pulls ahead again. If I tested this with two rounds from Wither Horde, then yes, the line will climb a bit faster, but the delay at the start would be even longer, and so would that second delay around 11 seconds. Yes, I do think DPS will be a little higher with two rounds fired, one at the target followed by one at the floor, but not by as much as you might expect, and it's all down to the extra downtime to reload with a horde. When you couple that with the fact that a lot of bosses in Destiny hover off the ground, and if they don't then they can move around a lot, it really didn't seem worth testing. 
This is not like Anarchy, where you can fire two rounds back to back at the target, as the magazine in that can of course hold six. But that's not the full story, is it? When actually in game and using with a horde, I personally find it to be one of the best ad clearing weapons available, which you can do while you then focus on a major with a heavy weapon, for example. Add that to the fact there's almost always special ammo lying around these days, and it can improve DPS a little. I think it's an excellent choice for any content. Don't let the raw numbers and data on screen now put you off. The next thing to talk about was Clown Cartridge. This was the best possible outcome for 20 rounds, with only two reloads being required, but I had to test it a number of times before this happened for me. So it will have slightly worse DPS if this doesn't go your way. Of course, in the gameplay before the boss, you may have used the weapon, reloaded and replenished reserves, meaning you'd be starting with more than five in the opening mag and that will improve your chances of firing 20 rounds with just two reloads. But still, rapid hit and frenzy, coming out on top out of these two, with it only falling behind around 12 to 15 seconds. The ludicrously fast reloads are what make this slightly better, despite it needing to do that one extra time. Now let's see how the disappointment that is Sleeper Simulant compares. So I won't be doing anything with this weapon now until it's fixed. It's just not a good choice at the moment, especially when you consider it's an exotic. So, does this mean that linear fusion rifles, or in this case, threaded needle, can be part of the DPS meta? To help us decide, I'm bringing on some of the best single DPS weapons from last season. Starting with Cold Duello, this has impact casing, impulse amplifier and frenzy. Damage for this has been retested due to the nerf to frenzy. And now Whisper of the Worm, a weapon I personally think is slept on a little, but this is the example without the delay to proc Whisper Breathing, meaning you're aiming down sights and ready before a damage phase starts and now Cloud Strike, looking very strong, as we all expected. And finally, the Lament, the DPS King, with new damage numbers since the nerf to its heavy attack, which isn't actually by as much as I was expecting. I'll cover that in another video though. So looking at this, yes, a well-rolled linear fusion rifle absolutely can be a part of the meta now. They aren't quite up to the level of the best on screen, so Whisper, Cloud Strike and the Lament, but as far as I'm concerned, this is meta material. It looks like they're now in a better place than rocket launchers, coming out on top of this Cold Duello, which is one of the best rocket launchers I've tested, even with the nerf. And so they should be better. They require precision damage after all. Rocket launchers don't. A surprisingly well-balanced buff, I think, personally, and I'm really looking forward to testing Sleeper Simulant once it's fixed. I'd also like to see an extra round or two in each magazine. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to talk about for these. I'm not going to discuss the differences between some of the weapons from last season that's on the graph, but I'll leave it on screen for you to take a look at yourself. Future videos that I'm planning include a number of different heavy weapons paired with Izanagi's Burden, the Breach and Clear Artifact mod, a number of new exotic armor pieces, revisiting Anarchy paired with snipers and slug shotguns, a video talking about balancing PvE, any new weapons this season that are worth looking at, including those from Vault of Glass, the three class-specific swords, and a huge summary video for the end of the season. Anything else you want me to consider, please do let me know, but I've got quite a lot to get through at the minute. And on that note, it's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and give me any feedback in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.